Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to learn all about the slideshow module in Lightroom so that we can tell our story to music. Now, I'm here in the library module where I've created a collection and I've put the images in the order that I want them to appear in the slideshow. So now all I have to do is move over to the slideshow module by clicking on it in the modular picker and setting up my options. So let's take a look at those options. We'll start on the panel on the right hand side. The first option is to zoom to fill the frame. So whatever area I tell Lightroom to show the image in, I have the option to automatically zoom if the aspect ratio of my image does not match the aspect ratio of that frame. Or I can leave that turned off. I can also choose to stroke the border of my image. Now here it's a little bit difficult to see, so let's move to the backdrop area and I'm going to turn on my background color for a moment. Here's the color swatch in case I wanted to change that. In fact, let's just go to pure white for a moment. Then we'll go back up to my options. And in case you're wondering, the reason that each panel is closing when I click on another panel is because I took the time to right mouse click and set the option here to solo mode. If you're on the Mac, that's the control key and then choose solo mode. That way only one panel is open at a time so I can quickly navigate between them without having to do a lot of scrolling. All right, getting back to the stroke border, you can see here that I can increase the width of the border and it's the border around the image. And if my images are different size, obviously that border will adapt to each image. I can also cast a shadow here and we can go ahead and increase the opacity and maybe the offset just to make sure that you can see this drop shadow right here. So it's up to you whether you want your slideshow to look like this or maybe more basic by turning these off, going back to the backdrop, turning off that background color and just having a black background. All right, let's move on to layout. The layout area just shows your guides and that's what these white lines are. The nice thing is, by default, they're linked, so you can simply click and drag to make your image larger or smaller. I typically don't take it all the way to the edge because when I'm playing this back on my monitor, I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of a black frame all the way around. If I want to offset my image a little bit, I can unlink the guides and then I can move the guides left or right, top or bottom in order to offset them. This might come in really handy if, for example, I want to add my name or my copyright down here at the bottom. So I'll just offset it, bringing my slides up a little bit. All right, let's talk about overlays. There are a variety of different things you can overlay. For example, I could put an identity plate in my image. So here's the identity plate right here. And an identity plate can either be text-based or graphic-based. And the way you change this is by using this little disclosure triangle here. If you click on that and then choose Edit, you get the Identity Plate Editor. So here's the way that you can add your text identity plate. And if you want to add a graphic, you would click on here and select that graphic. But the nice thing is you can type in anything you want here. You can change the font, the size, the color of it. And then as soon as you're done, you would just save that identity plate. If you want to know more information on creating identity plates, there's another video on Adobe TV that explains all that. For now, let's go ahead and just click OK and move on to the other options. If I want to override the color of my identity plate, maybe I don't want it white but a different color instead, I can always select a color or if I click with the eyedropper in this rainbow of colors here, I can actually then click and drag anywhere outside of my image and select a color. For now, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I liked white, so I will uncheck the override color. I can change opacity of my identity plate and I can also change the scale so that I can make it larger or smaller. As far as watermarking goes, the difference between watermarking and the identity plate is the identity plate can be anywhere. You see when I move it around, I can anchor it either to the edge of the slideshow 
or I can anchor it to the slide. So an identity plate can be inside my slide area or inside my photo or outside of it. See, the nice thing about anchoring it to like the bottom of the slide is if I were to change from a horizontal to a vertical image, the identity plate stays in the same location. The difference between the identity plate and the watermark is that the identity plate can be outside of the image, whereas the watermark is always going to be on top of the image. One other thing that I forgot to mention about the identity plate is that you can anchor it in a variety of different locations. So you'll notice as I drag the identity plate around, we've got that little snapping behavior going on. That tells me where Lightroom's going to anchor the identity plate. So, for example, if I anchor it to the lower left inside the slide and I move from a horizontal image to a vertical image, you can see that my identity plate actually moves. If I were to anchor it, for example, to the bottom of my slide, when I return back to that horizontal image, you'll notice that the identity plate does not move. Now the watermark is going to be on top of your image and very similar to the identity plate, you can go in and you can edit your watermarks and you can have two different styles, either the text style or the graphic style. I have a graphic style saved here, which is basically just a logo, so I'll go ahead and select that for right now, and then click Done, and we can see what that looks like. Now, I think it's a little overkill to have both of them, so let's go ahead and turn off watermarking for right now. You can also show your star ratings if you wanted to, as well as text overlays. Now, what is a text overlay? Well, it's turned on, and right down here at the bottom is an ABC. Let me hide this left panel so we have a little bit more space down here. And now, when I click on the ABC, you can see that I can either enter in custom text. So I could say maybe like, Ireland trip 2011. And when I hit return or enter, we can see that that becomes text. And this text would be on every single slide, and it would be the exact same text. So maybe that's not exactly what I want. Let's delete that and click the ABC again. You'll notice that besides the custom text, I have the option for Lightroom to actually go and look at the metadata for each one of my images and grab information. So if I took the time to caption a bunch of images or title a bunch of images, or if I wanted to see something like the exposure, this is a great training tool. We could overlay the exposure next to the image and see what that looks like. All of these options right here will go out and actually look at the metadata so that when I move to another image, you can see that my options change. Oh, when I do have a text overlay like that, I forgot to mention that you can add a drop shadow to that text. All right, let's revisit the backdrop area. I had mentioned that we could change the background color. You can also add a color wash if you want to, and you can choose different colors for this or different shades of gray, whatever you prefer. But now you can see there's kind of this gradual color wash going from the upper right to the lower left, but we can change that angle, we can change the opacity, it just depends on what you want the background of your slide to look like. I'm very simple, so usually I just leave mine black. But before we leave this, I should also show you that you can insert a background image. So what I might suggest in this case is you pick something like a very subtle texture that represents kind of the mood or the feeling of the entire slideshow. So here I've just got a subtle texture that I can drag and drop. We can see that texture behind the image. The opacity is very high right now, but I could, of course, lower that opacity if you just want something besides kind of a blank slate there. All right, let's turn that off and the background color too. We'll go back to our basic black and talk about adding titles. So titles come at the very beginning and at the very end of your slideshow. So it's a great way to kind of set the stage for your story at the beginning. Maybe add your name, maybe add a kind of reference as to what the slideshow is about. And then you can also add one at the end, which is a great way to add credits, add your contact information, whatever you think is relevant to the audience that's gonna be watching your slideshow. So in order to do this, you would just click to add the intro screen. You can change the color of the intro screen. Now the intro screen is only shown for a few seconds and then it hides itself. So you should know that once you add your identity plate, when it disappears, you can always bring it back up by just clicking on the little scale option here. So again, this is an identity plate that I can add, but remember, we can make as many identity plates as we want, so I could go here to edit, and instead of putting photography by Julianne Cost, maybe the intro screen is where we want to put in that this is 
Ireland 2011. Again, we can change the font, the color, all of those things, and when we're done, we'll go ahead and save this as Ireland 2011. I'll click Save, OK, and now we can see that that becomes my intro screen. Again, I can click on that. I could change the font size if I want to, or what's much easier is to just scale it. Because I can override the color for the entire identity plate for the intro screen, but if I wanted to go in and just change like Ireland to be a different color from 2011, then I would need to change the identity plate. And we would do the same thing for our ending screen. Of course, you don't have to add them both. We just give you the opportunity to do so if you want to. All right, finally, we have the playback area. This is where you can select a soundtrack. So for example, I'll go ahead and click Select Music. I'm going to navigate to a folder that I have that has music that I purchased from Triple Scoop. So I can use this. It's royalty-free music. So I'll choose this. And then I can select Fit to Music. Now when I choose Fit to Music, Lightroom will go ahead and figure out how many slides I have, or how many images I have, and then it will change the duration so that it covers the whole song. Now, we can change our fade. Maybe 0.5 seconds is a little bit too fast to fade from one image to the next. So I might want to put this up to one second, but then I would better fit this to music again because I need Lightroom to recalculate how many seconds each image should be displayed if it's going to have that duration of a fade. And we can change the color of the fade. I think most people stick to either black or white. They either want like a really quick flash of white between them, in which case they'll put the fade way down to like 0.2 seconds, so it just flashes white in between. To me, that's way too startling um, for the kind of imagery that I'm showing. So I would just leave this color at its default, which is black, so that it'll fade between them. We can randomize the order. We can choose to repeat the slideshow when it's done so that it loops, and we can prepare our previews in advance. Then once we're ready, we can either preview our slideshow, which will just show the slideshow right here in this area, or we could actually play the slideshow. But at this point, instead of just playing it, because that's a little boring, what I want to do is just skip directly to imagining that we've finished it, and what do we need to do? Well, we need to save this slideshow, because if we want to come back to it later, we want to make sure that none of these settings change. So let's click Create Save Slideshow and I'll call this Ireland. And I don't have to call it Slideshow because look what's happening. It's going to place it inside my collections. So I'll place this inside my Ireland collection. I'll click Create, and let's go look at that collection. This collection has a very different preview from my other collections, which are just my regular collections or maybe my smart collections. So immediately I know that this is a slideshow collection. What's really nice about this is if I go maybe to the Develop Module Collection and I tap the G key to go back to the grid view, if I want to jump directly back to the slideshow and view that Ireland slideshow, all I need to do is click on the arrow button to the right of the slideshow. It opens it for me, and I'm all ready to play that slideshow. And if I like all of these settings, and maybe I want to apply these settings to another slideshow, maybe my Italy slideshow, then I would come right up here in my template browser, and I would click to add this as a template so that I could use it with other collections of images. So this might be basic black, and I might put in here, you know, it's, I might put the music in here, I might put whether or not I have my identity plate, whether or not I've got the intro screen. You just need to name this however it would make sense to you. I'm going to go ahead and put demo after it, so I know this is my demo, and I'll click create. And you can see that I have a lot of different templates that I use. So I have some that show metadata. I have some that show a title. I have one that's on gray with a black shadow. I have one here for instructional information where we can see a ton of information about the exposure and the camera and all of that. So that if I was using this as maybe a learning tool or a teaching tool, maybe I was trying to show the, the difference that Aperture or F-stop makes on an image, I could go ahead and show a slideshow of different images that were shot with different settings 
And I think visually that's a great way for students to learn. Okay, and this is terrific if I want to play the slideshow from directly within Lightroom, which is absolutely a, a great thing to do, but I also might want to export this so that it's its own independent file. So you'll notice below the templates, I have the ability to export this to PDF or export it to video. Now, when I export it to PDF, you'll notice that the music is not saved in the PDF slideshow. So really all I'm gonna get is a PDF file. But again, as like a teaching tool, this might be a great thing to have. You can also change the quality of the compression. You can show it at full screen. You can change the width and height, all these different parameters here. But let's cancel out and instead, let's look at exporting video. So again, I would just simply save it with a title. And then for my video presets, you have this different assortment of presets that you can select from. And the nice thing is, is that each one gives a little hint as to when you should select which preset depending on your output. So here, this is great for high quality HD video. If I want something smaller here, maybe that I want to um, use on a handheld device or put on the web, maybe I'd select this. So it's really up to you as far as where you wanna share your content as to which of these video presets you would select. Well, that's an overview of all of the different features in the slideshow module in Lightroom 4. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.